Welcome to the Health Coach Nation podcast. My name is Haley Rowe. I'm a sales and marketing coach and strategist for health coaches, life coaches, and wellness professionals who want to become a leader in their field by building their online community, rocking their sales process, and finally feeling confident about how they promote themselves and their marketing. On this show, we talk about tips to grow your business, save yourself time, and finally be able to create a sustainable, profitable business. Let's get into it. Hey there, the free four basics of client attraction class went amazing and the replay is available through the end of May. So if you want to catch the replay, you missed the live class, go ahead and DM me on Instagram at Haley underscore Rowe, H-A-I-L-E-Y underscore R-O-W-E or join the Health Coach Nation Facebook group and we can hook you up with the replay. And at the same time, right now, the strategy consults are open on my website for the zero to hero coach inner circle you can learn more about what's included how customized it is and all the other questions that you have when you schedule your free consult it's at hayleyrow.com where you can book that and i can't wait to talk more about your business and what might be the next steps for you talk to you soon hello everybody today i have a very special guest And we are going to be talking about her business journey in the wellness industry. She has a book. She has many wellness tips on her Instagram profile if you follow her. And she is going to be joining us live here on Instagram in just a couple minutes. So if you are new to the podcast, this is a Health Coach Nation podcast. And we are going to always be talking about time management tips on this show, um, marketing tips, business strategy suggestions, things like that. So if you have questions while we are live today with Elise, you can always put them in the comments. And if you have questions later, like you're listening to the replay and you have questions, you can always reach out to me on Instagram at Haley underscore row. H-A-I-L-E-Y underscore R-O-W-E. And I really want to um, let you guys know about an exciting opportunity for May before we get started. I'm going to have a free training, free class coming on um, middle of May. So the date's going to be announced to my email list very soon at HaleyRow.com if you're not on my email list. And I'm going to be teaching the four basics of client attraction, which will help you simplify the process of getting your next sale or client instead of doing complicated social media tactics, needing a funnel, needing all these things, right? So if you're just getting started and you want to be growing your business and you feel overwhelmed, that class is going to be for you. And um, I'm going to see if I can invite Elise to join us here. Here she is. All right. Hello, Elise. So what you can do is you can click that little camera button at the bottom and request to join. Invited you. In the meantime, feel free to share um, what you guys do in the comments. Awesome, Elise is here. All right, so Elise, if you click that little camera button at the bottom with the plus sign, you'll be able to join us. Or join the live, I should say. Awesome. Here we go. All right, I'm accepting it. Here we go. So when I click, here we go. I see you. Can you hear me?
If you guys are watching in the comments, feel free to post where you're watching from and what you do. Today, I'm super excited to talk with Elise about her wellness business journey. We uh, both have been following each other on Instagram for quite some time, and I always love seeing her tips and what she's up to and how much her business has grown. Um, Elise, can you hear me okay? <laughs> I was trying to get the lighting right now. I can hear you, and I can, can you see hear me? you. Yeah. Oh, you can. Hello, hello. Wait, it's hello. not really working. I was that's trying to get the... No, oh. that's not going to work. I'm just trying to... It's not letting <laughs> me go to a normal... Help. It, see, it's try, I'm trying to get the filters off. Okay. Is that... There. No, it's still... Looking beautiful in that lemon blouse. I love it. Wait, wait, something... Some sort of weird filters on. We got to get this off. Okay. It's not... Um... How do you turn it off? If you go back to the very first one, like that's like the yeah. non-smoking sign, <laughs> like the non-symbol, non-filter sign. Okay, you look good. Is that, is it off? It should be. I can't even see myself because there's writing, but I, it looks off now, <laughs> which is good because I don't want any weird filters. I just wanted to see you and talk to you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's nice to like connect. Like you said, we've been like, following each other and known about each other for a long time, but we've never had a face-to-face -face conversation. So this is great. Yeah, very, very excited. So why don't we start with you just introduce yourself and what you do. And I want to really dig into your whole journey of becoming the, you know, professional that you are today. Okay, well, it's a long one. So I'll have to like give you the um, brief version of it. But um, I'm Elise Micellis and I used to be Kale and Chocolate. And I think I share that because one of the points I want to make is that like businesses, even if you plan on doing something, it always like evolves and takes twists and turns and changes. And I really, um, I use food as the doorway, but I help people more with mindset about food. I just released a book a few months ago called Food Story. And um, that was really a big deal and a dream come true. And before getting into the wellness space, I actually practiced immigration law. Um, wow. which, you know, like we always think, oh, that is not related, but I feel like there's always like some things that you take from, you know, your former career or life or whatever, and then apply it to what you're doing today. So it really helped me to think in a linear way. And the tie in, I think, is that I just love helping people, you know, helping people create better lives. And that's what um, I did in immigration law. I wasn't one of those people deporting. Um, people. I was helping people stay together and families stay together. And I worked at the Department of Justice. Wow. So, what a yeah. Yeah, transition. But it's cool that you took, you know, the parts of it into your new career. So when you um, decided to start Kale and Chocolate, what was your initial intention? Did you think, oh, you know, this is going to be my full time thing? Or, or what was kind of your intention with it? So I had been practicing law and then um, we moved to, then I was, you know, with my kids. And when we moved to California, I'm in DC now, we moved for a short time for my husband's business. And it gave me an opportunity to get away from my busy day-to-day -day life. And like, you know, I, we didn't know whether we were staying a year or if it was going to be longer time. So I wasn't like really digging in and trying to like, you know, do all the things that you do when you live somewhere. And so I had this space to really like reflect and think, what do I want? And so um, I did end up doing a teacher training when we were in LA in yoga, which has nothing to do. I mean, it's everything's related, but it wasn't really, I never intended to teach, but I always wanted to um, have a deeper practice with yoga. So I had that time then, and that really um, created the space for me to go within. And I knew because of my passion and my personal interest that I always wanted to do something in wellness and help people with their, with, you know, to feel better and more comfortable in their own skin. And so I said, okay, if we end up having to go back to DC, cause I loved it in California and LA where I'm from, if we end up having to move back, then I'm going to do this program, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And at that time it was live or it was hybrid. Mm -hmm. So I was in DC and it was in New York. It was very close. And so we ended up moving back decision made. I'd been thinking about it like, actually carrying around the brochure, like this was 2009. So we had brochures back then. Now I don't even know if people carry brochure, but I was carrying around, should I do it, should I do it? And then I ended up doing it and I knew that 
this was it, this is what I wanted to do. But the thing is, is that I always, I was very fixated and focused on the food, you know, the food part, helping people with the food, what was on their plate. And while that's really important, it's such a strong pillar, I quickly realized after I got certified and working with a lot of clients one-on-one, -on -one, that the food part was only part of the nutrition equation. And this is 2010. So people weren't talking as much about mindset or helping people with their thoughts. But I knew that my personal journey was all related to that because I was eating everything that was like, you know, clean or whatever, you know, all the healthy foods and superfoods and making the smoothies and even making my kids their own, you know, like when they were babies, their own baby food. And so I, the missing piece was the mindset part, you know, just really getting into the having like not junk food thoughts, you know, like having positive thoughts and all the things that we really have caught up and talked about now. But so this was 2012 and then I got certified at the Institute for Psychology of Eating and that was such a game changer in my own personal journey and my own relationship with food. And it also completely changed the way that I worked with people too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of people could relate to your story as far as doing those certifications and learning about that stuff out of searching just for how do we be the healthiest we can be and the best we can be. And then you realize it opens the door to another thing you realize like, oh, wow, mindset, you know, and I think, mm -hmm. day like I, I got my first certifications too in 2010. And it was at that time, it was kind of not cool to be a coach. Like it wasn't like the cool thing it is. I today. know. Oh, I didn't I, like I didn't like using the word coach at all. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. It would be yeah. like, are you, like, do you do like, is this just like motivational speaking? Like, what is that? You know. So I think um, it's cool to hear the the journey you've gone through. So let's kind of fast forward. So you finished some certifications and you were starting out as a wellness professional. What were some of the hard lessons you had to learn or um, aha moments or even mindset things you had to embrace when you were first starting out as and you didn't have the following you have today you didn't you know be who you are today yet well I think the hardest part is that for me initially it was like I, I wanted to be spending more time with the food at the beginning and talking about the food and create and I was wearing all these different hats that I had never worn because before I was working at the Department of Justice I would go and show up and do my work and, you know, and, and be done. But then being an entrepreneur, you know, you have to do all the back end of the business from creating the website, running the website, you know, writing the, like we have this business model where so much of our content is free. So from writing newsletters and blog posts and all of that. And I just, I hadn't really realized like that I was going to be doing all of those things. I'm not sure why, but this was, you know, way back. And so I think the hardest thing was having those boundaries and I still su struggle with that. I'm not by any means, I'm better, but I'm not by any means because you could stay up 24 hours and never sleep and probably not be caught up with all the, like, if you're really. Uh oh, we you lost your sound. Did I just get okay, caught back? Yes. So you were saying um, you could stay okay, up all night. Sorry, and I don't off. So setting well, boundaries. It was just understanding, like, I think the hardest part for me was really that you're not just like, it's not just your subject, right? You're, you're owning a business and that there's not as much time as you would like spent on actually, you know, honing your subject when, in, while you're laying the groundwork of establishing yourself as a business. And I, I didn't, anticipate that. I mean, now I fully understand it, but I think that that's something that people don't really understand. They're like, oh, I want to do become a coach, whatever kind of coach that is, right? I want to help people. And you are doing that. But in addition to doing that, you're doing all the other things. And it's right. not like you can have a team, like, well, some people can, but I couldn't like have a team before I became established, you know? So I think that was one of the hard lessons. And then the other hard lesson was there, we're always being sold to. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it's very easy to think, I need that person who's been doing it for a long time. I need their advice. I need their wisdom. And to get caught up in that, I love being a student, but like in that perpetual mode where you feel like 
you need someone else to show you how to do it, you know, instead of really just trying yourself or you have to buy this program and buy that in order to be able to do it. And I, you could just go crazy with that. And do you, can you relate to that? And, I mean, I know you help people and you're selling to people, you know, how you can help them coaching, but it, even at your level, you probably are constantly thinking about, should I take, do this course or attend this conference? And like, at some point you have to put a limit on it, you know, like, and yeah. just do it. I think it's easy to just think, well, I, I'm not ready. You know, I need this to be ready. I need to pay for that. I need to go to this program or whatever. Yeah, you bring up two really good points. I think the first thing, the magic of my business started to happen when I did start to constrain, meaning like when I stopped looking at as many other types of coaches and what they're doing and how they're doing their content and actually just being like, no, I'm going to figure out what works for me. And I'm going to focus on getting my stuff out there and not overthinking every single step of the way. And like, oh, well, they post at this time. So I should like getting into that nitty gritty of like, yeah, take forever to do that perfect blog post or newsletter or whatever it is. And there will always be more things you can improve on. But the key is to get it out there and to be willing to test different things and see how your audience reacts to certain things, right? Like, so that was a big lesson for me is like one coach that I'm going to work with one, you know, marketing channel, I'm going to really master in the beginning, that kind of thing. And I really help my clients do the same thing as like focusing on the low hanging fruit first, continuing to expand from there, because otherwise, you're right, you will forever be in a spin of, I have all these ideas in my head, and they're not perfect yet. And I'm not going to put it out. And then the second thing you said is that there's always you didn't anticipate all the things that would have to come into play in being a yeah. business and i don't think any of us can because there's but some people let that uncertainty stop them from doing anything and paralyze them or they think i need to know all the how so just going back to your second point it's like i i gotta listen to more blogs i gotta listen to more podcasts before i can start because I need to know exactly how everything's going to go. And when you enter entrepreneurship, it's not like any other job you probably ever had. You're not going to know all the hows. Things are going to change. And you just have to be like, I have the confidence and competence in myself that I will figure it out and adapt as needed along the way. So when you um, started to grow this business and you realized I got to learn some things, what were some of the things that were your best, um, I guess, client generating activities or things that you realized with content that works really well? Like any tips or advice you'd give there? Well, I think it's um, to not to be generous. You know, I once went to like a writing retreat and I love this woman. She's off social media, Alexandra Franson. And she's like, you should always like give like give and share and then that's like when people feel that and they feel that you're like generously like sharing and sharing authentically that's the other thing I think you know telling personal stories is huge and but um you know for me I don't know everything just kind of happened organically and and I've had different waves with my business you know where I've been focused sometimes it was much more on the one-on-one -on -one clients and before I wrote my book, that's really what I did. And then other times I was doing more group programs and working with people, you know, in a group. And I think that as long as what you're doing, like you are excited about it and you feel like this is like aligned with your vision, people feel that energy. Like it's true. You know, if, when I'm not really in, in the right place to have clients, I notice people aren't asking to work with me. You know, and when I say not in the right place because of personal things going on, because I'm writing the book, you know, but then when you sort of open yourself up and you like you genuinely want to, you know, bring in more clients or, you know, sell a program or whatever it is, people feel that authentic energy. So that I mean, I think that would be like a, a one of my best tips. But, mm -hmm. you know, just to if something not I think also not to be afraid to pivot. You know, we're always evolving. Our times are changing. What people, what's resonating with people, the kind of ways they want to be supported is changing. And so I, I think don't be afraid to pivot or say, you know what, that worked for me then, but it's not really working for me now, or that's not my strength anymore. And, and to 
be okay with that. And it doesn't mean that it was wrong. It just means you're in a different phase and you're able to serve people differently. And so that's where I am right now. I told you this by, we were texting or something, that I'm now working on a group program. You know, I was, I, I'd like to take a lot of the content that I put into my book and break it down and really help people in a different, more digestible way. Cause there's a lot in a book and it's different and it feels different when you're, when you're receiving it in different mediums, you know, from videos to emails to group, you know, workshops. So, um, that, you know, that's where I am right now. Did I answer your question? Totally. Yes. And the first thing you said about being generous, I totally agree with you. And I think the person who gives the most value, it comes back to you, whether it's in the form of people referring you, or even if it doesn't come back to you, the point is that you giving out value and serving people is what we're here to do as business owners. And I think so often people get in with the wrong mindset, like, oh, well, if I give this, then I need it to bring back immediate <laughs> results. And I need to, how do I know if I'm not giving away too much? Like, I don't want to give away too much. And there's like this real scarcity mindset when it comes to giving value. I see a lot of people thinking like, what if I give too much, then I'm just gonna not have any clients and not make any sales and whatever. And so I think that's the first roadblock to remove because it actually keeps you from standing out and you know that kind of thing so how do you navigate like i want to give but i also want to offer for people to work with me and and have it be a strategic you know a strategy or something like that like how do you manage that what was did you have any of those blocks as you were putting out good content yes because you don't like you don't want your content to feel like halfway, right? You want it to be, but at the same time, you don't want to put it all out there so that, you know, you're not feeling like you're offering something different. And I think that's a, that's a really good question. I think that the way that we show up on social media every day, have these conversations and I've done a ton of podcasts, I have my own podcast, that it's, it's hard to hold back. Because you want to, you know, like I'm an overachiever. And so I want to make sure that I answer completely and that I share completely. But um, I think that there is something very different when, I mean, for sure, when you're working one-on-one -on -one with people, like, because you get to really hear their stories and, and talk to them in a different way. And, and, and so that is different, but I, I don't, I don't see it as the same thing. There's only so much you can say in a 45 minute conversation. There's only so much you can say in a caption. And also people take, you know, you can repeat the same content in different mediums and people will like absorb it totally differently. And the example, this is like a really little example, but like if I do a still photo from, have a still photo of a recipe, right? And then I put in the caption, something about it or what it means to me. And then I do a reel with the same thing in the voiceover, people are absorbing that content in such a different way, you know, that even though it's the same thing and the same recipe. And so I feel like there, when you work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, when you work with them in a group or, you know, or you share some sort of program that they can buy and do on their own, it's, they're, they're absorbing it differently. So I don't feel like, you have to worry so much about giving it all away because you're giving it in different ways. I hope that makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. And I agree with you. The people who listen to your free content and actually go implement it and change their life with it is a small percentage of people and it more power to them if they do that. But most people need that personal touch, that personalization, that guidance from you. And anybody can find any information on the internet. That's not what we sell we actually are helping them implement the impl uh, information into their life. And sometimes people want to go deeper than a blog post or a content piece of content, like you said. And so it's not the same thing. So I totally agree with you there. And I think that um, one of the things that helped me is just not having an attachment to needing it yeah. to put it for me. Like, I'm putting it out there and I know I trust that the right people will reach out and, you know, I, 
I think for me personally, like when I follow someone or listen to their podcast or something, I, and I get value from it or a mini win or a result, I actually feel much more compelled to be like, okay, now I want to pay you because I want more of this, right? So to me, it has the opposite effect. And even if I do implement their thing, whatever they teach, and I don't need them as a coach or whatever, I am much more likely to refer or talk about it or, or whatever. So I think just thinking about not needing, because when you go in the mindset of I'm doing this, and if it doesn't work, if I put in all this effort or time or whatever, and it doesn't bring back for me, that's not your content or your business's job. That's your job with your thoughts and your, you know, marketing plan and not putting the responsibility on like, I, if I make this guide, I better get, you know, 10 people signed up for it. Like you have to, I'm not saying don't track your data and don't have a strategy, but I am saying it's your responsibility to have things going in a way where you're not putting so much pressure on one social media post that if it doesn't right. perform for you, you're going to be freaking out. You know what I'm saying? So what would you say as far as where you're going now? You said you're working on a group program and um, you've, you've really done quite a wide variety of things with your blog and your podcast and this book. Um, what have you, I guess, realized as far as business-wise, because you're somebody who has offered a lot of different things, um, what have you realized as far as like how to get yourself focused on something and also tell us more about where you're going now, where you're headed right now. All right. Well, you know, I mentioned that you have to be willing to like pivot and, you know, and evolve and everything It's sort of just like all of us. There, it's a weird time, you know, because we've just, we're coming out of like the last two years and we want to talk about it, but imagine that writing a book and publishing a book during that time period. So like, not only did our life turn around, but then, like I was trying to write a book at the beginning of, like I started writing it in the end of 2019, so through 2020, you know, when the whole world mm -hmm. stopped. And so, so much of what I was doing is just not the same for multiple reasons. So I had this big break because I was also, from a content perspective, very hyper-focused on the book, you know? And so now I have like, I mean, I still have my podcast is going and my, I, I have a one-on-one -on -one practice, but I am, I want to keep going with this whole food story message because I think it's a message that people need to hear and it's not okay to be, you know, uncomfortable in your own skin and not have peace with food. And this is just a different way of looking at how you relate to food, you know, and, and to go back. And so I, I still want to keep, I'm, I'm still here in it, in this same message. And then the next logical step would be to have a group program, a signature program where people can, you know, take it with me, especially the first time. And mm -hmm. it'll be a combination of like, you know, um, live, some live part of it. And then also some recorded video and worksheets and um, even a cooking component to it. So I'm really excited. It's going to take a little while to develop. So that's really what I'm focused on. But something that I've always, always wanted to do, and of course, over the last few years, people haven't been doing this that much, is leading retreats, too. Mm -hmm. Because then you can really, like, immerse people in an experience and go through, like, like have them really feel like it's transformative over a short period of time. I love taking people out of their element. I love the details. I'm so detail-oriented. So, you know, that's, that's on my radar and, um, you know, I'm still in this book, but I have other books inside of me. I just don't know, you know, I'm not sure yet if, if I'm, I'm there, but I do have ideas that I think are different than some of the other books out there. So that's always on the, the list, but I'll, I would love to keep growing my podcast. I, do you enjoy podcasting? There's a oh. little different format. Yeah, I love it. I, you know, did it initially back in the day to connect with new people and have a reason to connect with new people, you know, and learn from them. So I, it was kind of out of interest of like, I was a podcast junkie myself and listening to so many podcasts. And I was like, well, what if I could just talk with people about their journey and stuff too, right? So I have really enjoyed it. Um, 
and it's been a good way, a good way to nurture my audience and that kind of thing. So that's exciting that you're going to be. Experienced. Yeah. So I have this vision with the podcast and I don't know how it's going to work out. So right now I have like just the very classic format where I have one or two guests on at a time, you know, we talk about their food story and then mostly how it led them to their expertise or there's some sort of, uh, you know, connection to what they're doing, to what they've experienced. And I really want to do something where I have people sharing, like not just experts, but like people sharing parts of their food story. And I, I don't know what that looks like, but it's almost like humans of New York kind of thing, but in the food story, you know, where if people are sharing their stories from farmers to, you know, everyday people to people who've, you know, struggled with it because of diet culture, just yeah. having, and having more of that, you know, where, you know, our themes on the podcast, but it's really, it would be so much harder to coordinate than just having, you know, one guest or two guests, but that I really am itching to do something on my podcast that's very different. So if you have any thoughts on that, um, or any other podcasts, you know, that are, that do that, let me know. Okay. I love it. I will think about that. And I think, you know, one thing that I want to point out that's cool about you and how you've evolved is you have this message of, you know, I want to help change people's food stories and I want to help them, you know, change how they relate to food. And it doesn't necessarily, you're open-minded as far as how that message takes place and is delivered. So whether it's in your book or it is going to be this new podcast format or it is going to be your group program, as long as the mess, you're really like focused on your why and therefore yeah. the owls have become clear for you and, and they've, you just kind of one thing at a time done that in your business and it's really cool to see. So I think one thing the audience can pick up is like, what is your miss mission and your why? And then how it's delivered, stay open-minded, you know, like yeah. maybe a group program maybe it is going to be you write a book or whatever um so that's something i wanted to point out and then the other thing you said before that now i'm trying to remember i think i might have forgot so <laughs> never mind but um we got some good comments that Dat data rockade coach was enjoying it and thank you for that um so elise how can people stay connected with you check out your podcast all the things yeah, well, the, my podcast is called Once Upon a Food Story. It's wherever you listen to podcasts. And then I'm on Instagram, all of social media, but Instagram is definitely my baby, at Elise Musellus. You can see it here. And then um, my website. I have a lot of good content that I don't share on social media that goes up on the website from blog posts to recipes, you know, and um, just always adding to that. And that you can find out about working with me one-on-one. -on -one, and that's my name, EliseMusellus.com. So that's awesome. it. But Haley, it's so good. Thank you so much for having me and for all that you do to help people get clear on their vision and how they can like, you know, make a difference in the world. I really appreciate you and all your tips that you always share. Thank you so much. Yes. And I appreciate yours and I'm excited to see where you take things. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. And if you liked it and want to reserve your very own free sales audit, go to HaleyRowe.com slash strategy hyphen call to book your very own free sales audit. On the call, we'll talk more about the common concerns you get from your ideal clients, how to overcome those concerns, how to coach through objections, how to change your mindset around sales and improve your sales process so you can be closing and converting more clients. I can't wait to connect with you and go to HaleyRowe.com slash strategy hyphen call to take the first step. Thanks so much. Have a good day.